Hello everyone, welcome back after my uh my four month absence. Now you see I wanna I wanna thank uh Frost Graffiti, a YouTube user who sent me a message and said, Couldn't you just use an emulator? This is something that never really crossed my mind for some reason. So thank you. Let us start <sighs> chapter three. That was really loud, hold on. Actually I should probably wait for this. Okay, the cause of loudness seems to have just been from my mic. So feel free to set out chapter 3. Whoops. Eh, whatever. It's just chapter 3, it doesn't matter if I talk over them. Feel free to skip this chapter, because to be frank, it, it, it feels like a bad fan fiction. This is actually working better than the actual PSP did. Except the music. There's literally no music, so my bad. I mean, I can't fix that. This really wasn't my day. I knocked over my alarm clock this morning, and of course it stopped working. The very last pork sandwich sold out right before my eyes during lunch. And I was roped into a favor when I happened upon my homeroom teacher, Mr. Yamazaki, long after the school day had ended. So now, like it or not, I was on my way back to deliver some notes. I was on my way to deliver some notes to Miss Yui, our homeroom TA, who is out sick with a cold. I'll try and uh, add some of the music in when it's needed. And some. And some bad news about Corpse Party 2 Dead Patient, which I was going to record. Apparently you need the game to record it, and since I don't have $60 for the game and shipping, I will not be playing it until the Xseed does a localization, which could be anywhere from this year to two years from now. I stopped and compared the memo in my hand with the apartment building in front of me. It was two stories tall and looked a little on the shabby side. I st Oh, okay, the text kind of messed up there. Probably about 20 years old. It didn't seem very solid, nor was it particularly stylish or, she stylish or chic. It was a completely unremarkable structure in every way. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, another thing about this chapter that's really, quote, fun. The it, It's not in Heavenly Host, as you can probably notice. So yeah, there's a chapter not in Heavenly Host. Doesn't that sound exciting? I was really getting fed up with his handwriting, and from a teacher, no less. In any case, it seems certain the apartment was on the second floor, so I trudged up the startlingly narrow, steep stairs. The metal staircase was thoroughly blotched with patches of rust. Why would someone live in such a run-down apartment building? I don't know. Are they? I know that there's been a lot of, well, a few strikes up here in Canada with the teachers, but I don't pay any attention to them. I felt a little sorry for her, but in a way, this place kind of fit her personality. With that thought in my mind, I turned my attention toward apartment 201. No. Oh yeah, that's a, I don't. I think I mentioned this already, did I? No, I don't know. Maybe I did. But there's no, there's no gameplay. Like if you, if you didn't like the the point and click gameplay of the other chapters, and don't worry, there's none of this in it. There's no gameplay at all. It's just dialogue and choices. So you know. Yeah, chapter three. We, uh, yeah. I, well, I was gonna say something, but never mind. The door plate for the room nearest the stairs had a name I didn't recognize scribbled on it. Passing room 201, I continued down a narrow walkway toward the end. Wandering alone around an apartment building I'd never been to before made me feel kind of nervous. It wasn't like I was doing anything wrong, but my back still tensed up as I maneuvered around piled up strollers, plastic toys, and bundles of newspapers. And then, finally, I arrived at the last door. Here. This was it. I breathed a sigh of relief. The door plate for apartment 207 read Shishido. For an adult's handwriting especially, the letters were rounded and overly cutesy. 
This was Miss Yui's place, all right. Jeez, that, that text. I only need to read something written in small, written in small script on the corner of the door plate. Well, Miss Yui doesn't have a dog. She has Monet. <laughs> so how exactly does one beware a house cat? Is it even possible for a house cat to be threatening? They're really mean. At any rate, I confirmed beyond the shadow of a doubt that this was Miss Huey's place, so my errand was nearing its end. What's wrong with that? It seems to make sense to me. Okay, yeah, that, okay, I, I get that part. He said he was busy with meetings, though, and he really needed one of his students to help him out. But was it really okay to entrust a school student with confidential class notes? My mind kept drifting from one question to another, and I'd become acutely aware of the inherent value of, in the notes I held in my bag. But tempting as it was, I just couldn't bring myself to look at them. Mr. Yamazaki put his faith in me, after all. But, uh, um, thank you. And I was stronger than that. I couldn't let this get the best of me. At any rate, I was here. I should have just been able to drop off these notes and be on my way. Putting all my doubts and misgivings aside, I rang the doorbell. And then I waited, and waited, and waited some more. But there was no answer. Just push them through the mail slot. Yui-sensei! I rang the bell again, and also tried calling out, but there was still no response. Just push it through the mail slot. When we had heard that Miss Yui was staying home sick today, we were all pretty disappointed. That's why part of me was actually a little happy that I was asked to run these over to her. I figured I'd be able to check in, see how she was doing, and let everyone at school know that she was feeling better. The mail slot. The mail slot, Satoshi. She was probably sleeping, or out at the doctor's or something, but what if she were hurt? I tried opening the mail slot and peeking in. Yeah, you, you're aware that the mail slot is there. Just push the nose through. I thought maybe I could get a glimpse of the room inside. Yui sensei I thought me. Oh, oh, yeah. Text. It felt kind of wrong peeking into someone's house without their permission. But I was legitimately worried about Miss Yui's health, so my conscience was clear on this one. <coughs> oh, Nico. Monet. A well-groomed cat was facing the door and staring back at me. With its head tilted slightly to the side, it let out an adorable meow. This must be the cat I was instructed to beware. Um, thank you. And since Miss Yu was al always going on and on about her little buddy, I was pretty sure I remembered his name. Is that an R or an N? I'm Oh, never mind. Okay. So da Mone Chanda. Such an ugly color. Miss Yui talked about her cat a lot in class, so pretty much the whole school had heard of him. She even had some tin tins of cat food hidden on a shelf in the classroom, probably because she she'd bought too much and had no room for them in her apartment. Mone Mone Sensei wa iruka. Yoshiki brings up the uh, cat food in the cap cabinet in the classroom if you inspect it in the first game. <laughs> My shoulders sank. I felt defeated. What the hell was I doing? I closed the mail slot and stood back up, and then pushed the papers through it. Right? 
どうしたんだろうどっか外出中とか空いてたりしないかな Lost in this speculation, I placed my hand on the doorknob. And with a quick twist, I turned it and pushed on the door, opening it easily. Monnet's whisk whiskers twitched as I called out to him from the entrance way. Nando? Sono tori da niatte? Monnet mo yappari so mo ka. Satoshi, that was terrible. Here I was, talking to a cat. Was this what I'd become? I was feeling pretty uneasy. Not only had I peeped into someone's home, I walked in without a second thought. Moreover, this was where Miss Yui lived. Alone. In other words, a woman's apartment. No matter how many times I reminded myself that I was here on an errand, I couldn't help feeling that I'd not only crossed the line, but leaped over it. Yui-sensei! I tried calling her name one last time, but as I expected, there was no answer. Just leave him on the counter. I was trying hard to avoid being too nosy, but my eyes inevitably began surveying the room. The apartment entrance led out immediately into the kitchen, and beyond that there was a sliding door to some other room. I could see light through the gaps. I strained my ears, but there was nothing to hear, no signs of life whatsoever. Miss Yuri must eh, have been out. One more time, I tried calling out to her, but... Oh, one more time. I tried calling out to her one more time, just to put my concerns at ease. I felt like I'd seem even more suspicious if I stayed silent. Yui-sensei! desu! Still nothing. Maybe she was asleep on the other side of that door. Yeah, that... You should, probably should not do that. Shaking my head furiously, I cast out that sudden impulse. That was a terrible idea, pure and simple. Entering the apartment unannounced was bad enough, but walking all the way in, opening that sliding door, and peeking inside, that was just too much. Now she seemed like she'd be pretty understanding, just say, hey, I came to bring these over, and you left your door open. She'd be like, oh, alright. Text. Text. Okay, I guess it's not gonna fix that time. I'm on a mute as if in agreement. Actually, hold on. There we go, I just had to remember what the button was to open this. No, scratch that, I'd be in plentiful dense scalding water, that's what he said. I'm on a mute as if in agreement. Panicking, I once again surveyed my surroundings. I almost felt like there were eyes on me, staring with disdain. But of course, nobody was there, except Monet. Oh. Who was probably looking at you? Yeah, there you go. Now you're using your noodle. Wondering why I didn't think of this sooner, I dug into my bag for some paper and a pen. Crouching in the doorway, I ran my pen across the page. I brought class notes at Mr. Yamazaki's behest. Everyone has been worried about you. Sorry about barging into your apartment. Darn text. Oh, there we go, it fixed itself. As I was writing the note, I sensed the presence in front of me. Until just a moment ago, this house had no signs of human life in it, but now I could feel someone standing directly ahead. Standing and looking down at me. <laughs> Fidgeting nervously, I put down my pen. Raised my head slowly. 
Arkansas white. Slender. Ankle. <laughs> Shocked, I shot my head up, and there, standing before me, was Miss Yui. Miss Yui's stance right here reminds me a lot of uh, Yoshi Shinozaki's stance when you find her ghost in Chapter 5 of the first game. Like, it just looks like it. A lot. Not such cute noises. She was looking right at me, but she seemed decidedly out of sorts. Her hair looked dis 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 disheveled, disheveled. I don't know what that word is. Her gaze was unsteady, and her pajamas were in complete disarray. She was like a completely different person from the usual kempt educator we'd come to know and love. I stood up frantically and held out the note I'd been writing. Bud? Hmm? Miss Yui is just standing there, stupefied with a completely vacant expression on her face. Sensei. I called out to her as gently as I could. Bud? She was really dazed. She seemed almost like a ghost. I had a sudden uneasy feeling, worried. I walked up to Miss Yui, grabbed her shoulders, and tried to snap her out of it by shaking her. But instead... <laughs> this just seemed to make her cough. Sensei! <laughs> These were wet, productive coughs, and spit was shooting out of Miss Yui's mouth with every one. I frankly tried to shield my face from the spray, but my reaction time just wasn't quick enough. Oh, splendid. I put a hand on her cheek and found it thick with a slimy film of saliva. Yeah, she seems perfectly fine. Miss Yui hobbled back a little and fell to her knees with a thud. She had a completely she had completely sprawled out in the hallway, moaning and groaning the whole time. Sensei. Wiping the spatterings from my own face, I leaned over and took a better look at hers. Oh, such cute noises. It was bright red. Come on, text. You can do it. You can do it, text. Thank you. Strained breathing, a stuffy nose, and a visibly high fever on top of it all. She was sick as could be. I thought maybe her sweat had cooled down, but then realized her disheveled pajamas clearly weren't doing her any favors, or certainly weren't doing her any favors. With heart pounding a mile a minute and face red as a traffic light, I set about buttoning her up. She absentmindedly extended her shaking arms like a zombie, slowly reopened her eyes, and looked up at me. It was the gaze of a severely fevered mind. Miss Yui was clinging to me tightly. I couldn't move. I was frozen in shock. She began to weep. You see what I mean when it seems like a really bad fan fiction? It seemed like I wasn't getting through to her at all. 
and the sensation of her chest as she held me was making it virtually impossible to fight her grip. I was utterly powerless against this opponent. Uh, yeah, of course. They had to add the sound effects. To what makes that kind of a sound effect, though? Like, I can't think of anything in existence where if you poke it, it goes bloom. Or a just anything like that. I can't think of anything. I'd never realized before just how soft a woman's chest really was. Thank you, Satoshi. God, am I that weak-willed? I had to remind myself that Miss Yui had me confused with someone else. Mustering all the strength I could, I gripped her arms and tried to pry them off of me. But she was a lot stronger than I had anticipated and wouldn't let me get away. <laughs> the text hurry up and load faster. Thank you. As she squeezed me tightly, I felt as though my upper body might collapse under the pressure of her softest parts. Thanks, Satoshi. I was blushing uncontrollably. Miss Yui has an adorable voice. I struggled to wriggle free, but Miss Yui only grabbed me tighter. Our bodies were getting more and more intertwined, and every time I squirmed, Miss Yui would just pull me in even closer. As her chest rose and fell erratically, droplets of sweat slid down her cleavage. I could feel the feet the heat of her fever radiating off of her steadily encroaching face, as well as the shoulders I'd grabbed in an effort to push away. But she was acting like she's like completely wasted. Questions were swirling around in my head. Why was Miss Yui crying, and who is this Tsukasa person? But I was m most concerned for the state of her pajamas, which had become even more disheveled during our struggle. <laughs> Realizing that not a single word was getting through to her, I sighed resignedly. I'd taken care of Yuka I'd taken care of Yuka any number of times when she'd caught a cold and drawn a fever, but I don't recall it ever getting this bad. I don't think it ever gets this bad in real life. Miss Yui was usually calm, collected, and rational. Who would have ever imagined that a fever could leave her so thoroughly discombobulated? I put more strength into my resistance, and finally her arms relaxed just the tiniest bit. But her expression changed drastically. <laughs> Miss Yui was acting like a spoiled child. Slipping out of the shoes I'd still been wearing, I again drew close to her sprawled out form. There was no way I could just leave her like, here like this. <laughs> You know what, I think I'm going to stop right here. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hopefully the audio quality is better than before. Farewell.